Give game three. Yes, we will. Game three is here. A little bit of a wait. Don't know what XXS was doing. Had a bit of a break between game two and game three. After what happened, I'm really <laughs> not surprised. A huge comeback by LFY and what looked like an IG victory. They stormed down towards the throne. Nearly ended the game, but a hold into push back allowed LFY to come out swinging and forcing a drawn up series. So one game separates both of these teams from qualifying for ESL1 Genting 2018. And drag and drop, the draft begins LFY's with an ancient apparition DK up against an Earth Spirit Batrider. Lots of aggression. Lots and lots of aggression. Especially the ancient apparition seems to be the hero of this particular series. Again, first picked here in game number three, for, but for the first time in the hands of L of Y rather than IG, who still get themselves the Earth Spirit back for Boboka straight up in the first phase together with a bad rider. So a lot of early aggression, a lot of initiation coming from that alone. But again, that DK, one of these standard answers, right? Having that very safe mid lane hero that isn't all that susceptible to these kind of early roll ins, unless you have a very, very strong nuker up to uh, to combo the air spirit up with. LFY's we'll see who that's going to be. There's still the Death Prophet in the pool, unless LFY want to ban it out, because IG, they have the first pick coming into the second phase. So it might be something that they're looking towards again. Mm. Uh, DP has seen uh, a little bit lackluster in the last couple of games, though. Very, very good and play by both teams to kind of focus her down and make sure that uh, she doesn't get the full Five utility from her, her ulti or she's just shut down completely. And against the DK, she's never going to get super far ahead in laning stage to really push the advantage. No. So I, I feel like LFY can maybe just let that hero through, ban out maybe the Chaos Knight or something along those lines. But CK might be a hero that they themselves are looking towards with that AA combo in the safe lane. Invictus Gaming. Right, get rid of the Oracle instead. So that removes the Oracle Huskar, and it also removes the potential to save people from the Ice Blast. And IG go for the Shadow Fiend. The DP just going to be ignored for game three. Yep. All right, so a bit of a mix up already. SF, still one of these heroes that can provide that expert of damage. Uh, even up against the Dragon Knight early on, if you do get Ten maybe level 3, remaining. 2 points up on the raises, if you want to go that route, and uh, Five all it takes remaining. then is just a bit of a no extension from the Dragon Knight, perhaps. Uh, a little bit too deep into the river. And um, LFY, they've yet to pick up their hero that can uh, kind of counteract that, that can match up the aggression with from, <coughs> from the Earth Spirit, can kind of keep an eye on him. A lot of the classic ones have been banned out already, still in the first phase. Task Bounty Hunter and Night Stalker. The big ones here all taken away from L uh, LFY and of course the Clockwork. Haven't seen that, uh, oh, haven't seen a whole lot of that hero just because he's been such a high priority ban for these Chinese, <coughs> for these Chinese teams in this qualifier. But the Nix Assassin making his way through. And we're touching on it in the last draft here up against the Batrider. But now that counter pick finally coming through. So of course you have that easy stun from the Spike Carapace on the Firefly into the follow up and into quite a decent amount Ten of burst from that mana burn eventually. It's also that vision hero being able Five to scout people out, remaining. spot potential openings, set up for nice ice blasts from across the map, counteract what the bat and the earth spirit bring to the table, especially early on. And of course it's pretty open for four or three. Not qu not quite sure which role he'll be heading into just yet. We'll find out in a couple of picks' time. But IG first. Look for that five-role hero from them. What are they going to give to Q? Winter Wyvern is out there. Sure, he's up against an Ancient Apparition, but against someone like a DK. Still very potent with all of that magic damage, the reset of the team fight, something that's very good with a Shadow Fiend to set up for a Requiem or so. Of course, you could just look for the safer options, you know, the Witch Doctor, the Rubik, LFY's something along turn. those lines, but they go with a Phoenix instead. Very interesting. Well, so far, if you get the Fire Spirits off, there's not a whole lot that, they, that Alpha can really do about the eggs. And uh, I'm not sure if they can really fit in some sort of attack speed focused hero remaining. into the lineup. Um, because the classic ones would be like Troll, Persian Juggernaut, uh, with the spin to be able to get rid of these, this Fire Spirit effect at least. 
and be able to stand next to the egg and right click away at it. But uh, at that point, you're very merely focused on your course, which could be a bit of an issue considering all this AoE and, of course, just the teamfight prowess that the Phoenix also brings to the table in general. Supernova to zone people out. Well, there is the jug with the spin. Healing ward going to be nice as well. Along with that DK. Percentage-based heal, very, very nice indeed. So remaining heroes, we are still in that position where LFY have that 3-4 split. The next assassin. Ten seconds remaining. Unsure what role he's heading into, while IG looking for the one role. Five seconds Up against a DK remaining. and a Juggernaut, you know, relatively high armor heroes. The CK is still out there with that minus armor for him. He's very, very good indeed. Pairs up nicely with a Shadow Fiend. A way to deal damage into that Blink Lasso initiation from Batrider. Uh, outside of that, we, 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 we just don't see Drow enough anymore. It's just not really a hero. It's a potential here for a Drow strat to come out. Four ranged heroes, but I don't know. A Drow just doesn't seem... She brings enough to the table at this stage. So it always also seems very easy to be picked off just with an Ten assassin finding her remaining. instant ice blast and just a little bit of extra damage coming through Five seconds from any with anything really. So it's it you have to spend a lot of effort, a lot of resources in actually protecting that hero. A razor would have been super nice here, but banned out in the second stage. Mm. What 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 else could we see from IG? What, what would be good here? I almost want to see like a gyrocopter, just just because, you know, but with the Abaddon now, it's like three very tanky heroes with magic immunity, also BKB builders. You probably need something that hits a little bit heavier into later parts of the game. Um, sure, hmm. it's a hard decision, honestly. Yeah. I mean, Ursa is, is there. Uh, but IG that. don't have any stuns again. Like they've got Blink Lasso and they've got Earth Spirit. But outside of that, they don't really have any guaranteed catch, whereas there's Nyx, there's Dragon Knight here for LFY. Mm, I guess Cold Feet adds yeah. into all of this, but it's a nice kind of chain between the three of them. And they still do go for the CK, as expected, really. Back to the comfort zone, essentially. Keys of Death has played that here a couple of times here over the last couple of days, so you know where you're at. You don't really have to think too much about how well, you'll be able to uh, to bring his like his impact in, just on an individual level at least. And it's not the worst, uh, not the worst hero by any means, right? If he gets fat, we know we all know what he can do. Also pretty decent, just having the extra illusions to tank up the juggernauts, omni slashes, uh, plenty of health to outlast the Abaddon, but it could still be a bit of an issue for him, uh, for them later down the line. Just with that uh, counterplay against the Bad in particular. Ten seconds remaining. No, no Owl. Bessie the Chameleon instead. Or the bat or whatever. Whatever it's called. So they've got a four Nyx, three Abaddon. It's going to be super difficult to zone out in Flame, it feels like. Even with CK, Earth Spirit, and Phoenix. They don't have the best chaining of abilities here. Will be heavy, heavily reliant on this blink timing of the Bat Rider to get themselves off the ground. Whereas LFY, it's much simpler. They just get their level sixes on Nyx, on Dragon Knight. They start running towards towers. They'll have the save of Abaddon to get out of lassos. They've got the Juggernaut spin to kill off Supernova as well. And of course, they've got long range Ice Blast as the game progresses to get pick offs on pretty much any of these heroes from IG. I, I really do favor LFY's draft a fair amount, but you know, IG have the potential to outplay in the lanes if they can set things up nicely for themselves. Get some good wards down. Watch out for these rotations from Nyx. Maybe if you, can, if you can kill the Abaddon a couple of times early on, his potency definitely does wane until he comes back into the game. Yeah. Certainly another one of these, uh, these games that might very well turn into one of these late game situations sooner rather than later. And uh, it's gonna come down to how long these heroes survive, like Abaddon, can be extremely ridiculous in that regard later. And if he then goes for that Radiance build, he's... Abaddon, by the way. Ab Abaddon, what, whatever. <laughs> no, it's not whatever. He literally says his own name. Yes, yeah, so, so uh, I see it differently sometimes. 
It's like me calling you Bob. Like, okay, I'm, I'm going to pronounce drag and drop as Bob. No, you can't just do that. It has a pronunciation. All you right, can't just be like, right. I pronounce it differently because I can, because that's the way Chillax, Americans do things. Chillax. XD. <laughs> you get annoyed about me being tilted by things. No, you get you get tilted by stupid things out of your control. I, I can teach people <laughs> how to pronounce a bad and correctly. Oh, well. But um, the point is, like, at some point he turns into this hero that you can neither ignore or really kill off at the beginning of a team fight, so he's always going to have that impact. We rely not upon fortune. Now, they might have the burst with, like, Requiem or CK Phantasm to kill him before the ulti pops, but super tight window yep. to be able to do that. Batrider moves up to top. Nyx and Juggernaut, the laning opponents there. Just need to get Juggernaut a couple of levels, get him to three or four, and then the supports can start thinking about rotating around, kill off Batrider maybe once or twice early on, as the Radiant putting pressure in onto Super very early on. Earth Spirit and Shadow Fiend both setting up middle lane and pressuring DK back from the creep wave, while Abaddon really shouldn't be under too much pressure down here at all. So even rotating AA in to try and deal with this. He's taking a few right clicks here and there, but the Phonic Shield should allow him to walk away, but it's been popped immediately. So yeah, so far so good down here, middle lane. It's matching up with the classic 2v2, yeah, it's no crazy shenanigans so far at level 1, but it looks good on the first couple of minutes of the landing stage. Poor Abandon. It's being punched. <laughs> but really, he's... Just not going to suffer. Double range creep coming his way. He's perfectly happy with the way this lane has gone so far. While Batrider has reached level 2, Nyx and Juggernaut not able to force XXS back just yet. But they're free farming Juggernaut up here while Abaddon is putting uh, just a touch of pressure in. But Sunray comes out. That's the harassing tool that we've been looking for. Forces out the shield at long last. In flame. Heal up with the tanker regen for now. But triple rate. If, if they can deny a couple of these range creeps, that's when you'll start to get pissed off. But yeah. it doesn't look like they'll be able to get that done just here. Trying to drag the wave back towards the CK. As Bat's being forced out by the Nyx. Four stick charges means another stun comes. Bounty rune stolen. <laughs> oh, banana. Very skilled. Uh, it's so annoying. Getting both of these boundary runes, taking them away from the Bat Rider who's. No real choice but to fuel up that stick for the Nyx Assassin, helping him out. Just keeping his, uh, his health pool topped up and plenty of mana in the tank to continue harassing the Batrider. So, XXS might have to fall back into the jungle eventually, but right now, Banana looking for other targets in mid. And this is a bit of a 3v2 as Shadowfiend already gets initiated on. One more right click up the high ground will not miss, and quick kill for the Ancient Apparition. Banana not even needed to help out here. Tries to get the second one, but a quick roll away from the Earth Spirit. Doesn't even need to sidestep the stun, but they get the a bad kill bottom lane. Sunray proving to be huge with the CK rift and stun combo mid lane roll forward onto the AA, but the kick back on the SF will be the saving move here from Baboka. Keeping the Shadow Fiend alive from this early point in Dragon Tail with the Cold Feet as the dive forward. Sunray in, but Dragonite is close enough to his tower to be okay. Very interesting how these kind of things will uh, work out, especially now with the rotation out of the bottom lane, the Baton. Uh, he's he, sure he got the kill, but he's coming right back with full health, full mana, so he just, can just continue what he, what he was doing earlier. Spamming out the Aphonic Shield and even engaging into right click battles with the CK. Yeah, this is the pressure that he brings, whereas Batrider, not as strong. We'll look to pull the wave back. Juggernaut 26 and 11. This is the pressure from the Abaddon that we were looking for, right? Onto the Chaos Knight while Juggernaut just free farms top lane. Uh, a lot of emphasis put in towards mid to try and deal with the DK and SF. Stop it from being such a farm trade between the two of them. Regen <laughs> sneakily grabbed there by the Earth Spirit. Take a look at this Batrider. TPing away deep behind enemy lines. Didn't get the creep wave. I think he killed it. He killed the previous one. Yeah. Didn't drag it back, though. 
So the wave is just going to be reset. Juggernaut can hold this yeah. perfectly fine. Roll misses. Boulder smash in onto the DK. Stops the razors from coming. Make sure he stays alive. Good little play there. Snap decision making. If he'd not turned and stunned, likely would have been triple raised. At least double raised by the Shadow Fiend. For now, only one point after the Dragon's Blood. Holding on to one skill point. Let's see if he... Uh Needs perhaps an extra bit of burst from the breathe fire. But uh, so far so good. I mean, as I said before, DK, very solid mid laner. Despite all of those pressure, still keeping up with the CS. Uh, back to back essentially here with uh, this Shadow Fiend. We moved up bottom. <laughs> good luck! <laughs> okay, maybe. Now he's got a shield again, mate. Level 3 shield. Okay, they're gonna Let's chase him. Down. Three yeah. heroes. Go on. You can eventually get the kill! Take, look, <laughs> half of CK's health, all of his mana. They've got a shrine. Okay, that's beautiful. Mid lane. Oh, hello. They've killed off the Shadow Fiend DK. Oh, God. Very, very deep in behind. Being healed up by Tango regen and, of course, his Dragon Blood. Does he have another Dragon Tail? He does not. <laughs> this is a slow and arduous <laughs> battle, but Maboka will come out on top eventually. Killing him off as the Nyx Assassin chased down. No points in the Carapace. Still level two and a half. Level six. Not level six, but six stacks of Napalm on him means... His demise was inevitable. Got flashbacks to the tide hunter yesterday with the DK just sitting there in the trees. Was forced to right click away, but uh, only one point on Dragon's Blood. Not quite as potent as the Kraken Charlanka smash combo. So yeah. Things are working quite decently here for the Radiant side. I don't know, this, this Juggernaut 43 and 21 is going to be super spooky. He's going to move yeah. into Battle Fury, he's going to outfarm the CK and the SF, and with that Omni Slash Cleave from the Battle Fury can potentially deal with the CK illusions if he gets farmed enough. Uh, it really does feel like once the Dire team gets their level 6 on Ancient Apparition and Nyx Assassin, they can move around and hunt for kills while the Radiant still need to farm these key items. You know, the drums, the BKB on SF. Oh dear, whoopsie. Uh, the CK, the armlet, the echo, the blink on him. They need these items up and running to actually be relevant heroes. But the most important one is by far the blink on Batrider. You can see he's... You know, every play in the book he's pulling out here. Dragging waves, cutting waves, farming jungle, dodging lane, anything he can to get. Every scrap of gold he's pulling it out. Uh, it's your lane that still has some catch-up potential here to, uh, to put, a, put a positive spin on it when it comes to IG. But uh, they keep killing Ab Abaddon down bottom. Abaddon, uh, you know. I, c I can never remember, remember it properly. It's Abaddon. It's one, it's, Abaddon. One, yeah. it's one B and two Ds. Emphasis on the D. Abaddon. Abaddon. Yeah. If it was two Bs and one D, then it's Abaddon. Then you enunciate I, I need to trade it properly. I need to just keep it in my head. That's, uh, that's, a big <laughs> that's one issue there. And he's level six. Holding on to that skill point. Close to unkillable bottom at this point, so they shift their momentum mid. Earth Spirit Phoenix sat behind the SF, who is only just now breaking level six, close to eight minutes in. It's been a, an interesting time here for him. Dragonite has also just popped it with so many heroes mid, it's kind of expected to go this way. Give the bounty rune over to the Nyx Assassin, as they might look for a dragon form top, but DK just wandering around, not really sure where he's heading to. Waiting for the Nyx to get the double bounty rune now. Still on level 3 on him. They, they're completely forced out the bat right now, though. So he's just got his level 6 in the jungle, puts an extra point up into the Firefly, so not looking to be active. Course. Not going for the drums, just straight up with the blink dagger queued up. Still a little bit Radiant away from that. So it does make a lot of sense. But this offlane tower already forfeit. Well, it mids. Uh, Boca continuing to try and uh, find something. But the ancient apparition playing very defensively here back clo and close to the tower. So no easy target. And he's getting closer to six. Nine minutes in. Tome will be coming out soon. They are struggling with the Nyx Assassin, though. He has been running around not really you know, ac accomplishing a lot in the grand scheme of things. He's been a pest. He's been annoying. He's zoned the Bat Rider a bit out of lane. But like we said, this XSS Bat has still managed to find a lot of farm. Dragging creeps back. 
into the jungle to kill him off with his Firefly. But you do need that Vendetta ASAP. The mid lane. Back surging it. Ooh, silence before the Omni Slash can come out. So maybe with the extra stun and the roll of Earthbird can get away from the threat. The Healing Wall will make sure that everyone is still very much alive and kicking. No Dragon Form for another 30 seconds, so the push will have to be done the old fashioned way. Good old right clicks. But Nearly uh, killed the courier though. Very quick yeah. glyph on it. Radiant Kept it alive. Well, bottom lane. Phantasm used, exchanged for the borrowed time of a bad in there. An assassin arrives to try and slow things down, but mid tower is going to fall slowly but surely. You don't really need to pop the dragon form for this. There's no glyph. Finish it off with some right clicks, and it doesn't look like LFY will be stopped. Well, if, if you give them enough time, then even right clicks without dragon form will eventually help. And, uh, Bring down this tower, Shadow Fiend. Still doing reasonably well, like keeping up in terms of CS, and now looking for another kill here with the Drag Nitros on the stun to prevent the follow from the Earthbird, though. The stun's still coming through, two raises, or one or two raises. Magnetized. connected. Oh, I'm, oh. No, I don't I'll think it's going to be enough on this. Ah, he's committing more, a couple of extra stones. Oh, he's dead. Region? Is Dragon he? Blood? Dragon Blood? Is he? Ra uh, Dragon Blood! Oh, one, oh no. the wand came off cooldown as he died! Oh, oh no. Oh, DK. That was really close. Well, Boka gets the job done in the end. I mean, he, he missed a couple of spells, didn't get the grip immediately. Magnetize didn't look like it was going to get in there, but just, just about scrapes the backside of the Dragon Knight. And down at bottom, Armored Chaos Knight. Likely means they will try and jump someone here. Inflame does have his ulti, though. So a bat and not really a target you want to be going for. But with a bat blink and a smoke in behind, Boboka will try and scout them out. Very early blink, considering this uh, that he didn't necessarily have the best time in lane, constantly got zoned out. But as I mentioned before, he did find ways to make up for that. Now, the look towards his next assassin, still struggling quite a bit in the level department. Not even close, anywhere close to level 6. He's getting some help now as Abaddon comes back. Did you do that one on purpose? Yep. <laughs> Just waiting for you to react. <laughs> uh, but there, there it is, there's smoke. <clears throat> they still have the Omni Slash, they have the Ice Blast available now. DK with the Dragon Form, everything ready to go. A scan from the Dyer trying to catch somebody on the low ground, but they're all sitting there on the high ground. Silence once again to prevent the instant one. There it is, the Blink Lasso. I'm not actually catching anything in particular, but it looks of an ancient person will still fall, stun coming through, but CK already has to get the hell out of there. Move damage over time, still taken away, but the rest of the team still doing plenty of work now. The Phoenix Supernova, plenty of damage over time, with the Magnetize going on absolutely everybody. They're all taken out! Slowly but surely here, finally the spin coming through, turning things around to the Bat Rider, now Shadow Fiend taking the re end of that, but all healed up by the Sun Ray. Is that gonna be enough? With the ABBA still in the front lines, the answer is no. And another shield. Juggernaut, stand up. Maboka holds them back. But a three for two, what was that in the end? Maybe a little bit more. Don't know if the AA died at the start. Yeah, he did. So it looks like an even trade numbers-wise across the heroes, but they're going to dive in for the Phoenix and try and catch some more. Definitely a win for the Dyer. LFY coming out on top with Juggernaut surviving, closing in on Battle Fury, but yeah, Lasso not really accomplishing too much. The spin came out with Juggernaut and they couldn't do enough to kill him off. He got his Omni Slash off and Abaddon with his shields keeping everyone up and running, but that healing ward at the very end through the Magnetize yeah. allowed them to turn and fight, kill the SF and chase around for more, but they don't get an objective down at bottom. Yeah. Tier 1 does still stand. But Juggernaut closing in on that one big item. The Battle Fury really is nearly here as a top lane. We've got the reveal to spot out the next assassin. Find that quick kill over on Banana as his vendetta does not give him the safety he desires against the dust of Boboka. Yeah. Also pretty sure that Geese of Death made a bit of a misplay there. He was running out at low health close to the tier two. No one was really chasing him, but he still had the uh, damage of time on him from the DK. And uh, it must have Omni targeted or something and still died in the end, which is a bit unfortunate. It looks like he might have been able to make his way out, even had the stick charges to work with, but 
Oh wow, blink rush yeah. from DK. Oh, interesting. This is going to give them a lot of initiation power. Help out the AA, get some big ice blasts. Pair up with the Nyx. So Nyx is going to go Vendetta, hunt people down, get that vision, look for targets. DK blink stun. Chain up with the Nyx Assassin and the AA. And pretty much anyone on this Radiant side is going to die. Shadow Fiend is trying to get into a BKB while the Echo Saber is coming from CK. I guess it, it could potentially be a Dragon Lance from the Shadow Fiend, but we'll see where he goes. There is just an overwhelming amount of magic damage. You really will need that BKB sooner rather than later. Uh, it's down at bottom. XXS watching over this tier one. Kills off the healing ward and blinks away very quickly as the rest of the Dire team smoking in towards Roshan with this DK ulti up. They know that the Phoenix is swinging from south to north, so they blink stun and they will immediately dispatch the Phoenix. Maybe turn this into something more, but the Chaos Knight has already retreated away from the tier one. Again in this phase, L4. Okay, I actually found Lassa down bottom on the Juggernaut. Still only slash available, but three seconds done. Perfectly timed. No prevent him from getting it off to try and save himself. So across the map, it's actually a pretty good trade here for IG as they try and stabilize in this phase where L4 has also been very strong in the previous games. 15, 16 minutes in or something like that. Starting to find a few of your items, but there it is. Magnetize again onto the next assassin, only forced out. That's by Carapers, but still bursted down with the extra raises. Now, can you find more? There's no lasso, but it's trying to slow down this DK, but no damage to prevent the blink somewhere. Still finds him. Another roll, another stun, and Batrider now with the Firefly getting some more damage over time. This is a very, very hard kill. But they do make it happen in the end, as there's no support coming whatsoever. A bad and TP cooldown, no Ice Blast or reaction from the Ancient Apparition, and with Juggernaut dead, there just was no chance. Next Assassin will now try to get himself closer to mid lane, but the SF's already out of there. Earth Spirit and Phoenix retreat as well. LFY, no idea what hit them so hard. Being run at by this Radiant team. And IG now with a big old Chaos Knight. Echo Sabers here, not even thinking about a BKB. He wants to go straight into the heart, even against an Ancient Apparition. Keep those illusions as tanky as you possibly can. Yeah. The idea is just get the drop in them, instantly delete the ancient apparition before the ice blast can come out. It's, it's a very viable option as CK, I guess. And you'll have your but, BKB uh, on SF soon as well. Yeah. On silence onto Nyx. Dust also caught him, so no invis shenanigans even if you had the Vendetta available, but... Missing the extra control spells means that he'll just walk out the old-fashioned way. Now the rest of the team joining up together with him. Juggernaut overtaken by the Shadow Fiend now. Isn't that worth wise? Oh, swings back. Shadow Fiend, come on, you've got to catch up on this. Juggernaut has cleared an entire creep wave with a couple of hits. Battle Fury, very strong. But they'll set up for the, the, the defense down at bottom tier two. Trouble is, LFY have five heroes here, so this Blink Lasso has to do all of the work, but the shield is there. Abandon saves his Jug, but they've got the damage from the CK potentially. Ice Blast will come through, but the other Slash bounces back around. Clearing illusions and cleaving onto the real CK, but the Supernova on their heads, and they'll take down the Nyx. The first one to fall, but the DK arrives. Stunned back onto the Batrider. The trouble is, this Sunray, the percentage-based damage through the Dragon Knight's armor. A healing ward, the only thing there really keeping him alive and keeping the Radiant team at bay. They could have killed Juggernaut easily if CK immediately phantasmed, but he held onto it for a little while. Ultimately, that meant that uh, Jugger could get that Omni Slash off and then the next spin into the healing ward. So, a bit suboptimal there, perhaps, from IG. Then he'll fight, get away from that one after that initiation. Death and gold are linked. But, uh, they do keep the tower alive, and uh, it's all you're really looking for, trying to slow down and building into that next set of items. Still Let's actually see. hanging around here. They <laughs> do expect out of wire to show up any second now again, but now division here deep on at the right side of the map will uh, make them figure out that that is not the case. And the rest of them show across the map as well. Oh, smoke here from DKAA. They've spotted the CK, that's Ooh, why. No. Banana should be able to set up for this. Doesn't need to Vendetta hit, just needs to stun. Just stun. Oh, okay, he goes for both. He's a skilled player. He knows what he's doing. 
plays the odds. Chaos Knight blown the hell up. It's one of those moments, though, if you go for that Vendetta Strike and the CK just manages to get away somehow, dodges the you know, sidesteps the stun, dodges out, and then you start kicking yourself, but they had the follow through. Oh, meanwhile, bottom, bottom lane. IG. They're going to catch. No, XXS too far away from the Juggernaut. Can't get there with a the Blink Lasso. In the end, Jugger will dip back and farm the jungle for now. Still under that vision, though, from the Radiant. Keeping tabs on this shrine area. And what's Inflame up to now? Is that a Solar Crest? Almost complete. Picks up the medallion. Very strong up against the Chaos Knight with that evasion. As they swing into the Roche Pit. This is very dangerous. Yeah, it's also one... One thing well, that definitely really helps you out quite a bit, but you still... Uh, actually, they do have plenty of physical damage from the looks of it. And uh, right inside, none the wise for now. They are moving in a general direction, but they're going to be too late. That medallion making the difference. Abaddon picks up the item immediately into Roshan. And they even see, with this one Observer Ward, exactly what's happening. They see Bat, SF, Earth Spirit. Sentry doesn't catch. The Glimpse as they jump in, Lasso onto the Abaddon, but his ulti pops and now healing back up almost to full as the CK pops the Phantasm Requiem. Comes on out and they'll bring down in flame the Supernova back onto the Nyx means. Well, this Radiant Squad have quickly taken down two of the Dire Heroes, chasing and looking for more, but the AA TPing away gets DDC back to safety, at least for now. No compromises here on these teams, like earlier in the series we saw. Uh, I'm just going a Death Prophet with the Oracle False Promise coming out immediately, but they didn't care about that at all in this game. Like initiating on, on an Abaddon like that uh, is generally not ideal, especially with, with the rest of the team behind him, but they dragged him out of position far enough and they had the extra zoning potential uh, to then kill him after that duration has ended. And even get get an extra on the next assassin, always nice to have, who's now though, looking or perhaps a kill on the bad rider, but he's all alone right now. TP through from the Juggernaut. And setting up for the bad rider. Juggernaut needs to get a little bit closer for the Omni Slash to finish him off. There's also creeps, but it does get in range. Ice Blast just for good measure. Bat tried to get the Omni Slash to bounce back onto some creeps, <laughs> but Ice Blast was always going to be there. Now DK coming in. So far, it's really been the Radiant dictating the terms of these fights with their big ultis, the Lasso, the Phantasm, the Requiem. But overall, you know, you look at this kill deficit, the net worth lead slightly in the favor of the Radiant. It still feels like the Dire team outside of team fights have had much better control of the map, taking towers, taking Roshan, big objectives, and still building up this Juggernaut to the, to the point where he's, he's sure killable, but with the Aegis, he'll come back and slap you down. Ice Blast lands in, Earth Spirit. Needs a few more ticks of damage as the Juggernaut will walk this one off. Down to half HP though, spin required, rifted back and taken down. And yet again, the Radiant win a fight, which the Dire forced a little too hard. I mean, you hit the nail on the head there, right? This, this is the way that these fights run, or these things shaped up time and time again, where Dire, LFY, just looking in for a tower or for some sort of poke into the Radiant side of the map. Then the counter initiation. Just even through all of this, these advantages that normally even this way team. Okay, that's a good catch. Shadow Nix Assassin walking in towards the Bat Rider, but still, Spike Carapace follow up stun will delay things a little bit further. Also has perhaps the ability to get the shield from the high ground, but they do drag him away. Another Spike Carapace now the shield finally coming through. Does make sure oh, that Banana, the coach here for this team normally. Uh, will be able to survive this initiation. BKB from DK is coming. They have to be careful with these shields, though, because they'll need shields to purge off Fiery Spirits and also Lasso. Maybe even a stun from an Earth Spirit or a CK. It's vital to get the shield timing right. Make sure your teammates aren't just chain stunned into oblivion and now they'll jump and oh the blink super gets a bit of distance but the bat blinks forward aggressively and they take down that dragon knight dead for a minute right next to an open tier one.
Let's finish off his BKB, but with a Phantasm here, these towers are going to fall. I don't even know if the tier two stands a chance. The continue is five people. Probably not here. They still have a few of the ultimates here with the uh, fan, uh, with the SF ultimate. Also the supernova coming back in a couple of seconds. Magnetize also ready to go. I don't know if you want to initiate on that being one down, especially if that's one of your tankiest heroes. The double shield coming in. Oh yes. <laughs> Pop on those creeps. Tier 1, Tier 2, easy objectives though here. LFY left wondering how they progress in this game. Butterfly from Jungle is coming up, but he still feels pretty squishy if he's the frontliner. We have yet to see the Dragonite and Juggernaut really play together though. Yeah. It's been the split across the map with you know, AA, Nyx, Jug, or DK making fights happen. But if LFY can get the five-man rolling, they are definitely in a strong spot. I feel like they need to make better use of that blink initiation from, from the Dragon Knight. But it uh, also feels like to really do that, they'd also need some sort of, sort of mobility item on the Dragonaut. Like a blink of themselves. So they can blink, stun, then into the blink only slash. Immediately take care of one of these strong heroes. And burst them down. But uh, at this point... Might not even be enough if you're thinking about CK, already 2,600 health points to work with. That's without the armlet. Ice Blast can deal with that. Yeah. They need to do these quick, swift surgical strikes without that being counterplayed. For now, IG sitting around the Shadow Fiend trying to bait him out a little bit. I'm not entirely sure about the positioning until they see the DK here in the bottom lane together with Juggernaut. QD warded as well. Got a sentry down, sees an obs ward, gets rid of it. Vision now limited to this one area outside of creep waves and heroes for the die team, but the tier two will take a tumble. CK, kind of alone up here, only the bat rider to help out. They've got TPs to come down towards the bottom though, as potentially LFY were looking for a high ground breach, but Really, neither of these teams wants to do anything committal until the next Roshan, yeah. which is going to be another potential minute and 45 for the faster spawn. Bounty. Big item-wise, though, we're still looking for this spirit Radiant vessel on the next assassin to deal with the Chaos Knight's Dyer's heart, which will be coming soon. Very good up against these tanky strength heroes. We've not yet got one on the Earth Spirit, so same story there against the DK in particular. Remove a lot of that HP regen away from him. SF Butterfly not too distant either. They've grouped up as if they want to smoke. There is one being held by the Phoenix, and they've done a decent job de-warding around in this area as well, with sentries all over the place. They're going to go for a fight before Roshan can potentially be up. This high ground being held by LFY could be an absolute slaughter fest. Also revealed the presence here with the razors, but they do have an initiation advantage. Once again, they find the DK. Shields, no one to be seen here, still being brought down almost instantly, but does get the BKB off instead. The drag back on the next assassin taken away immediately, but DK body blocked by his own team. They do get rid of the Phoenix Sun, but what cost now? The Requiem of Souls, more right clicks, drag backs here, and then with that reality rift, one by one they drop. Omni Slash bouncing through Juggernaut, actually coming into play now. The extra shield pops. They get quite a bit of burst damage in. <laughs> the blink of an eye in and IG, they were not actually ready for that. That this ice blast fight turning from around on its heels. A triple kill for him. <laughs> the ice blast onto everybody is this big ulti from the Juggernaut. Like we were looking at the cleave from the Battle Fury splashing between three or four, all with a shatter effect on them. Roshan, what's the damage? Eight, seven, oh no, really? Five, <laughs> four, three, but they won't understand the kind of situation they could potentially have found themselves in, so they go for the tier two instead. A simple objective, but a huge, huge fight for LFY. The Abaddon saving people. The, the, like, the DK just evaporated, but it didn't matter. Yeah. As long as you have this ice blast in the middle of the fight, everything goes perfectly. It's not just about the DK. I mean, it took two heroes out of the fight that didn't have an impact. It wasn't just the DK, but also the Nyx Assassin. Normally heroes that you look towards to see, all right, good amount of control just with the Spike Carapace, especially in this game, and also the Impale. Not really a factor in that fight. I'm an idiot, dude. What? My sleep-deprived brain thought that was Roshan respawning, <laughs> but it was, no, no, that was just the fast spawn. Still one respawn. minute to go. 
It's all good. One minute to go. Um, but yeah, the, the, the Omni Slash, that Ice Blast, and a, cu a couple of shields popping at the same time, it felt like a lot of really quick bursts coming through towards um, the Radiant side, and uh, they were not ready for that. So the BKBs have expired. Popping dragon form there. Spooky! Scared of what IG are bringing over that hill. I'm not sure what he was going to do with that. Well, he pops his ulti, regardless. Now, Butterfly Juggernaut, this guy is a monster. Hellafly once again looking for an opportunity. If they can get the jump on someone. Oh, it's a double damage rune bot spot. Roshan's alive in 10. There. <laughs> the correct counter this time. <laughs> and Jug gets the double damage rune. That is big. Still has the movement though towards the pit. A bit more concerted, but Hellafly also, for the most part, sticking around there. Juggernaut does have a TP scroll. Go to the shrine, order tier two as necessary. Golden Santa Roshan. So, it is IG who scattered out first, but they're also rocking straight through the scan. Oh, look at that, Abaddon has gone away from the Radiance. And now with Aghanim's queued up, point oh. booster purchased. That's <laughs> deflection, the spread. Oh, that Ags is going to be pretty damn nice. Uh, what's the percentage on that? Redirecting 50 yeah, 50% redirect. damage redirection on yourself on a 900, 900 AoE. That's pretty decent. Could be the difference maker here yeah, again, especially these these very huddled up fights. I don't know. Maybe Batrider will shift focus. Also, getting closer to the BKB, so it doesn't really have to worry too much about Nyx Assassin at that point. That he can maybe find the Juggernaut instead, trying to blow that hero up before the spin, before the Omni Slash can really create issues. Rather than the DK, who is perhaps a little bit easier to handle. At the same time, they're all smoked up together now. Both teams know that this Roshan. Oh god, Phoenix. Okay, it's too late. That was a big hit, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, goodbye, Phoenix. They know there's a ward here as well. Sentry down from DDC will clear it up, and Roshan opens for LFY. Uh, Abaddon should have his Aghanim CS in his inventory fully done. Is this Aegis Cheese? Yeah, of course it is. Be able to give the cheese to the DK, Aegis to the Juggernaut. And even though Shadowfiend has the butterfly, it doesn't feel like he's in a position to really fight up against a Juggernaut with a similar item set. Especially not with the ages, so huge momentum swing now, finally, in favor of L of Y. But if this series has taught us anything, that this doesn't necessarily mean that they're also going to win the game. All right, we'll see some big throw from one of these teams. <laughs> Something bad will happen. Everyone will disconnect. With the dragon form ending, they'll take the tier two, take what they've won, and back up. Maybe if they find one of these heroes, like. Uh, moving outside of the base, looking for a kill. Carapace is there. Earth Spirit stunned, chained. DK overlaps a little bit, but they've jumped in. The last one to the AA. That is a big target, but it's the freaking Omni Slash on the front lines that's you know, slapping around these illusions. CK no longer has Phantasm, and their BKBs have kind of been wasted. Ice Blast now flies. The AA didn't die. Now he does as the Shadow Fiend sprints across the map. TP coming off cooldown. He's going to have to BKB TP, it feels like. Oh, no. Never mind. Okay. LFY give up. They say, fine, Shadow Fiend, kill our AA. We'll let you have that one. But we will control the waves. Pushing these lanes towards the Radiant base. Again, a bit of an awkward fight. You do throw out the random dust. So perhaps they're spotted out by the Observer Sentry combos. Nyx Assassin was there, but then initiating into the Spike Carapers without immediate support. Not the Courier almost being dropped as it flies. Uh, almost being dropped by Illusions as it flies by. As L of Y is setting up for the side going push now. Level 2 Dragon Form. That Glyph delays them, but it's so much damage coming in from Jug and DK. Tier 3 dies. They will fall back a little bit here, maybe baiting an initiation from the Radiant because the Batrider has gone into the stuns of the DK, the Nyx is there, the Glimmer, the Dust follow through and the Batrider is brought down. The Magnetize will try and do damage, but the tick rate not enough to 
deal with that healing wall as the Ice Blast lands onto the CKs of Supernova. Shredded by this dire squad and they blink further forward. CK's caught and killed and without a buyback that could be just a lane of racks. Maybe even game. Creep wave arriving, the backdoor regen has kicked in. This but is really how it ends, just them jumping in, going in with just the last of 5 or 10 seconds of cooldown. Same for the BKB, so they just die one by one. And two full sets of racks at least, and perhaps a third, even 50 seconds on the sidelines. And they just straight up call it. GG well played, and uh, LFY qualify for ESL and Genting. Yeah, it's a bit of an underwhelming end considering the, the, the way the, the series, series has yeah. gone. But just all right, like this is that. This is Dota sometimes, I guess, right? Just oh. like that. Juggernaut being super annoying again. Could you not steal his moment, please? No. <laughs> How long does it have to go on? <laughs> Just gotta go. No! That's a different sound. I think that was a different one. But Juggernaut, very happy with his victory, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Groans of delight <laughs> from the Juggernaut, bitch! As LFY dispatch Invictus uh. Gaming in a best of three, two to one. Oh, goodness gracious me, but just complete outplay, it feels like, from start to finish. The uh, Abaddon, Juggernaut, and the AA all doing spectacular jobs, but I've got to say, the Nyx Assassin, scouting, hunting, sure, he was level deprived early on, but as the game progressed, really did prove his worth in this draft, as it was a struggle for the SFCK and Batrider to really do any damage. And when you've got a Phoenix as your five support, okay, you did well in laning against the Abaddon, zoning him out, but it was never enough in the team fights to deal with what LFY brought to the table, but that concludes our first best of three. We've got one more for you coming up in just a little bit, though, don't we, Drag and Drop? We do indeed. It's going to be a newbie Miracle versus WVGJ Thunder. Another best of three. The winner of that will progress through to ESL1 Genting as the second Chinese team. So a short break here. Hopefully, we'll get things underway as quickly as we possibly can. Some ads are coming your way. I hope you enjoy them. <laughs> 